Today I've come to a place called Avebury. I wanted to take a stone circle at sunset. I've got about half an hour to set this up, which is uh, a little bit too short, but uh, let's see how I manage it in today's video. Hello there, so I've come to Avebury Stone Circle. Uh, it's um, not far away from me, it's about an hour's drive away from me. So quite, you know, easily within um, what you might expect uh, as, a, as a, a journey, if you're um, a, a sort of amateur photographer and you want to go and, and find somewhere. This place is pretty amazing because they're Neolithic stones. And then around it, there's a little village that's been built up as well. And there's not a lot here that I actually wanted to photograph, but all of the last year, I wanted to get some photos of some Neolithic stones. Um, I went to Stonehenge, it's a great trip, it's a fantastic journey, but I didn't quite get the sort of thing that I was looking for. So here I am in Avebury, hoping to get that. Now I found what I think is a good exposure. Let's take a quick look. I'm not sure actually that you'll be able to see that very well because uh, there's uh, obviously the sun is in the sky and then in, in the foreground you, you can't see anything else. So I'm going to have to do a bracketed shot with this. And actually I wanted to do a really long exposure for the uh, foreground anyway. Now there is a question here. I've got, I'll, I'll have the three stones, which is sort of your, your central point, And then I'll have the sun behind it, which hopefully is going to give me a nice sunset. We'll have to see. Uh, is there anything in the foreground that that I can use as a kind of a, a baffle between the two. I'm not sure there is. Um, walking over here, actually, I've got to be a bit careful in case I fall down a rabbit hole. Um, walking over here, there's some sort of stony bits, uh, but uh, let's just have a quick look around. I'm not sure even that quite fits in with what I wanted to achieve for the shot. And if it did, I'd have to focus stack and I'm already going to have to stack for the light. So is that a good idea? I don't know. I don't know. Um, like I said, I don't have very long to set this up. So I think the next thing I'm going to do is set that up so that you can then see uh, what I end up with. Okay, so the sun is getting lower in the sky and I found what I think is gonna be a good shot. If you go uh, over here, you'll see I've got the camera set up. I'm not sure if you can actually see that in frame, uh, but what I've got are the three rocks in a row uh, and I've got the sun right behind it. So this is gonna be a difficult shot. I'm gonna have to bracket it. I'm not sure if we're actually going to get any detail in the rock and that's a problem because if we don't, I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to do with it. And of course, we're going to have to contend with the fact that there are still people coming in and out of here as well. So even on a long exposure shot, we might actually get something that we don't quite want. That's all right though. You can always go to go, can't we? So I'm going to go over here. I might have to sort of take you with me, which might not be as smooth a transition as it was in the past. Um, I did want to talk a little bit about some of the things that I got for Christmas, uh, which have been incredibly useful uh, specifically for this particular shoot. Um, I, I, you might have seen this before. This is the, the, the sort of the harness that I, uh, I tend to use when I'm out in the field. But uh, I also got uh, an L bracket uh, over the Christmas period and I got a new tripod as well. Now, before I was using a Manfrotto B3, it was fantastic. It was everything I wanted. It wasn't mine. It was, I borrowed it from, from my mum who uh, wanted it back, obviously. Uh, and so so over the, over the Christmas period, I got a, a, a new tripod, the name of which escapes me, but I will do a little piece to camera in just a second that'll tell you exactly what it is. So this is the uh, tripod that I've got. It is a Vanguard Vio2 Go. It's the carbon fiber version of it. It's a really, really nice tripod, uh, which has got um, a separate ball head and then a separate swivel on the base, which I didn't have with the Manfrotto. The other benefit over the Manfrotto, in fact, the biggest benefit over it, is that it's got an Arca Swiss um, plate on top of well. So I've taken the plate off, uh, the quick release plate that came with it off completely. And what I've got uh, on my camera now is an L bracket. And of course, the benefit of the L bracket is that you can keep your camera where it is. If you suddenly decide, actually, I want to do a landscape, you turn the camera over, your tripod doesn't move, and that means that you've got uh, a, a more stable shot. If you've spent ages sort of figuring out where the level is on your tripod, you don't mess any of that up. It's a really quick uh, release, open up, put it back on again, and, and, and do that. Uh, 
I'm pretty happy with both of these purchases. The other thing I've got, uh, which you are you are benefiting from right now, uh, is it's like a it's like a virtual assistant. It really is. I basically I bought an incredibly cheap, incredibly light tripod uh, from Amazon. It's uh, the lightest and cheapest one I could find. So it's not particularly good, but it's what my uh, video camera now is sitting on, and it allows me to do stuff like this, which is a little bit further away, a little bit more uh, talking to you, uh, like like you'd normally see on a thing. And it also lets me do shots a little bit like this. You see, I can go over here, uh, and this is one of the benefits of the Osmo Pocket, that actually I could, I could then walk over here like that, I can still talk to you. And the camera realises that I'm moving, and the camera can move itself, and so that it's, it keeps me in, in focus, and it keeps me in frame. It's rather good, actually. And it will, it will stop eventually, so it does mean that you can do some really weird sort of panning shots as well. Now, I know I know I'm spending an awful lot of this video talking about video when I'm really meant to be talking about photography, but I'm still waiting for that sun, so why, why, why not? I mean, look, this is what I could do with this camera. If I really wanted to, I could do a walking shot as I go past the camera. I could be talking to the camera as it goes up here. I can even move round to here and it still keeps me in shot, and then I can just walk away. So now onto the shots that I've actually got, and like I said, I had the three stones uh, lined up, but actually it's a little better than that, because what I've been able to do is to uh, set out my rule of thirds grid, um, and the uh, middle stone is right in the centre, and luckily the other two stones are laid out in such a way that uh, they are uh, right on the, uh, the other two vertical... vertical lines. See, I don't know which one's which. I had a very bad education. Uh, there are the other two vertical lines uh, of the picture, which means, in theory, this should be quite a nice and well-balanced shot. I've also, uh, looking back, uh, I've got my horizon line just above the stones, uh, because we're going to have a mix here of the colour in the background that we want to bring out, obviously, but we're also should, we should get the, uh, the, the stones in the foreground as well, if all goes to plan. Now, uh, we're still a little way away, probably about 20 minutes away, I think, but because it's all set up now, all I've really got to do is kind of wait for it to happen. I can feel the light changing behind me. I can feel uh, the, 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 ev everything becoming different. I can start to see the lines of the stones on the ground changing uh, as, I, as I look at it. And uh, actually, I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but I'll try and get a little bit of a video shot that I can cut in here for you to have a look at. Uh, once again, this isn't the best way of shooting this camera, and you can just see me peeping in at uh, the edge. Uh, but you can see I've got it set to uh, 1 30th of the second to f22. Uh, now, the reason I'm putting it on f22 is because as the sun comes down, I want to see if I can get those little sparks of sun uh, coming out from uh, over the top of the the, the thing. It is worrying me a little bit that actually you can't see very much of the stones themselves, because I did want to get some of the texture of the stones in there, but of course as that sun drops it's going to get a lot darker as well. I don't know if you can see it on the video, but what you should be able to see, what I can see here, is actually some of that light that I was wanting, some of that colour, is starting to come into the sky, and I think in terms of composure, this is pretty much what I was expecting, this is pretty much what I want. And from there on, all I had to do was wait. And wait. And wait. Now this wasn't the first photograph that I'd taken that day. When I got to Avebury, I did take a, a little while to walk around the place, and the two shots that you can see on screen right now were both taken during that time. With the first one, I wanted to use the stones to, as a sort of a leading line through the photograph, so you followed the arc of the stones as they moved around. And on the second one, I wanted to get a really, really good picture of that tree. And what I love about both of these photos is that you can still see the colour of the light coming through on both of them. So the sun's, I mean, it's getting even lower now. Um, I've just tried a shot 
which was a bracketed shot with five exposures on, and um, that seemed to go quite well. The very dark shot, which had the sun on, which you'd then sort of bring through in, uh, in Photoshop, uh, looked pretty good. The very bright shot seemed to have some nice uh, texture in, not a lot, but enough texture in the foreground, in the stones, to be able to bring a, uh, something interesting out of it. So we'll see what that's like when we get back in to Photoshop. It's now uh, around about half past three, so golden hour is now, essentially. Um, I have been standing here since two o'clock, my feet are frozen. <laughs> These things happen. Um, but uh, I'm going to try again in just a minute to do one more shot like that. Same sort of thing, same settings that I explored before. So we've got um, a very uh, one thirtieth of a second shutter speed. Uh, we've got uh, f22 because we want to get those those lines in the sun. Uh, the sun is still really a little bit high for what I was really after at the moment. But if something goes wrong and that's all I'm left with, that should at least give me uh, something that I can play about with uh, when I get back into uh, the edit suite. I should really say this is the first experience that I've had of using both an L bracket and my tripod in the field. I mean, in a field, in the field, not just in this field, in any field. I'm quite liking it. I think actually the, the tripod's really very good. Um, the, there is something about the, uh, the way that it's been put together. It's incredibly sturdy, incredibly solid. It even has a little hook uh, underneath the uh, central column, so you can hang your bag on there to give it extra weight if you need it. Of course, here where I am today, you don't need it at all. It's absolutely fine. Uh, but perhaps you would want that if you had, uh, you know, if you were balanced precariously on a rock and you just wanted to give it a bit more uh, weight to make sure that it didn't blow over or something like that. Um, so yeah, completely solid, uh, really nice controls. It doesn't take a lot to open them, but when they're closed, they're really nicely uh, closed. They're really nicely uh, locked off, so you're not going to have any slippages or anything. And actually, for a tripod that's particularly light, it carries an awful lot of weight. I mean, it carries up to about six kilograms, which is way more than my camera, even if I were to put a flash on top, even if I were to put a monitor on top of that. Uh, and actually, I could put a whole rig on top of that, even perhaps with a, a heavier lens than I've got at the moment, and it wouldn't, uh, wouldn't make a much of a difference. So on the whole, I am incredibly pleased uh, with this tripod. Um, maybe I'll change my mind in six months to a year, who knows? But uh, for now, it's absolutely perfect for what I was looking for. Well, it's four o'clock and we're still not quite there yet. Um, but I think I'm going to take an exposure because actually at this point, uh, there's a bunch of cars and things coming past and I don't know that we've, I've got very much longer here before something bad happens. So I have got, if this works, uh, quite a nice, uh, the sun is just coming over the stone on the right hand side. So I'm just going to take a picture of that. Uh, you'll see this in the, in the image that we, that I'll probably try and put on screen right now. Um, here we go. Yeah, now I think those images are going to be uh, all right. Um, I think I want to do something a little bit different. So what I'm going to do is unscrew this uh, plate here. I am at the perfect spot, you see, to use my L bracket. And I'm going to uh, put this on the other way around. Now, I know you can't see this very well, uh, but it is right, I assure you. And I'm going to refocus this. And zoom in a lot. And push this down. Now, of course, we are shooting straight into the sun here. Um, okay. I'm just going to see what that looks like. Now, now the, the camera is on its side. I don't know if this will work. So I'm going to put that back uh, where it was. 
turn this round, do this, screw this up. Uh, I can pull the screen out a little bit now so I can see what I'm doing, which is really useful. Uh, now, ooh, okay, that's interesting. Maybe if I focus on it from here, we might get an interesting shot. I don't know. I'm, I'm just, I'm just trying things out as the sun's, sun's going down. I don't think I've got the exposure right though. Ah, <gasps> that might be it. I think that'll take an awful lot of work in Lightroom to, to do something with, but I think that might be it. That's really quite good. Um, okay, so we're going to move back round to uh, where we were before. Uh, I quite like the sun where it is. I think the exposure and everything was just about right where it was. But I'm actually going to pull in a little bit on this one. So we're going to still have that stone, that first stone in the centre. But the other two stones are going to be just either side of those other uh, converging vertical lines. Um, and then the sun is right at the top right hand side of that uh, that thing. Uh, and once I've done that, I'm pulling out just a touch because we're going to need enough space on this to sort of crop it down a bit later on. We'll focus. We focused. And we're going to do the same thing, same settings. Um, I can see those, those light rays on the sun. Uh, I think this might be a good one. <laughs> Gotta get a car right in short, aren't I? No, I'm gonna get lots of cars in shot. So we'll do that again. This is one of those moments where uh, you curse civilization for everything that it's done. I think we might be all right if it hurries up and does it. You know what? I think that might be it. I think that might be the shot. The sun's doing a nice thing in the background and I've got plenty of uh, dynamic range now over those five exposures so I can do something with it. I think that might actually do it. And here's the final image and I was thrilled with the colours in the sky and the way that the beams of light push over that final stone. And you can see that I've slightly lightened up the stones as well to try and bring in some of the textures, some of those wonderful textures in the actual stone itself. Overall, I am very, very pleased with what I've got here. Absolutely thrilled. And I tell you what, it was worth waiting around in that cold for hours and hours on end just to get that one shot. Well, that's it for today's videos. And if you've enjoyed this particular trip, then do leave a like and don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon. And if you could share this video to your friends and your family and anybody else you think would be interested in photography, that'd be a real, real help for me. Do please share this content out. And with that, well, this is the end of the video and I'll see you next time for more photo vlogging. And until then, thanks very much for watching and goodbye.